Now, make you know the face behind Protect Ozone. Ah, uh, Una, thank you. Thank you for coming to this, my rural community here for Africa Ikorodu. Uh, my name is Nasipasi Olali Kayodele, the founder of Protect Ozone. What do they do for Protect Ozone? They say we they train children, youth, farmers, and women on sustainable agriculture. So we will go there and teach them how to do the things that they do better. And um, yeah, it's there um, when I did very small. And um, because I live with my grandparents for, for village, Shagam to be precise, in uh, Mobile State. And what do they do for me? They say they buy one chicken and one cup for me where are they raise, you know, that time. And um, something happened during that period where they say, if chicken they die for my community then for Shagam, my own chicken no go die. You know, the thing they multiply, they go like that. So I come the few say na dear my calling day. <laughs> so as 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 I I enter school now, we be say I go the struggle for all other subjects. And I know to say for Nigeria, each youth where they Nigeria, no they lazy. The the only thing where they happen be say we no even know the gifts where we get inside our body. So I just stay calm, small, know the thing where they say I feel do without stress. I know to say in agriculture without stress. So if I the struggle pass mathematics, business study, account or what have you. But for agriculture, I know the struggle pass, and so I can't see say now this agriculture will be my future. So I said to make impact. I mean, try my best, do the best way I feel do inside agriculture, and um, that has been taking me up and down. And today, I really thank God how God is helping for the agriculture matter. Now you talk say they take you up and down, but make we go um, back to when it started to take you up and down. Wait till you study for school, and then after graduation. How you take find um, your calling? Well, uh, for school, I studied animal production and health. And um, because the acronym for animal production and health now APH, A for animal, P for production, H for health. But because people then think say agriculture no day rosy, agriculture day too difficult, day hard. So they know they call us animal production and health scientists. They, they call us animal pursue hunter. So, so for school then uh, the animal where they pursue and the other where they pursue can reach here. So as I did drum, um, agriculture no day rosy, agriculture day too difficult, day hard. So they know they call us animal production and health scientists. They they call us animal pursue hunter. So, so for school then uh, the animal where they pursue and the other where they pursue can reach here. So as I did drum, um, I can't finish school. I remember, say during graduation, my, I mean, during our graduation for school, people, they give their children key for house, key for motto, key for this, key for that. My mama come with me and say, guy, I don't get any key where I will give you, but take this key. Now the key to the, my poultry way they down, the thing still they there. Mm. We, you know, we just they do small extension. So now that one I get, I can't think, say, as a Nigerian, if you want to be successful, do what you love to they do and know the quick rush for money. Definitely, if you are if you they committed and you know where you they go, every other thing will come follow. Mm -hmm. So now I just start the backyard poultry. Mm -hmm. I started the backyard poultry, then it was around um, 2000 and, um, um, 2012, uh, 2011 to start backyard poultry. And um, along the line, something happened when they say, carry me go um, Tanzania uh, for East Africa. As I go, now in the airline, I tell us, say, uh, on behalf of every passenger, we day inside this plane, no, say, then go plant one tree each. I call the one that say, I study animal production and health. I don't understand the planting of tree. When we say the money where I borrow, buy tickets, you know, then they take and plant tree. They come to say, they go plant the tree for the country of origin of the flight. Say, now the country, they go plant them. As we come back now, they just tell us, say, thank you for using our airline, no. If you they come on Nigeria again, please use our airline. I can't think, say, so you take my money, go plant tree for your country. You know, plant tree for my own country. So as a Nigerian and an active citizen, I started putting people together, tell them the benefit of tree planting and what have you. So we, they started the tree planting, go rural communities, they plant tree and everything. So along the line, we said, oh, it be like, say, they do a good job, but which kind name we feel give them? What thing will they do? Nine, our people come to say, ah, no be ozone layer with the protect, with the protect ozone. So now so the name come protect ozone. So after that, we now feel say, we know feel just the plant tree. An average Nigeria, no one plant tree. They want something we will benefit them directly. So we can't think, say, 
instead of just planting tree, let's add a bit of agriculture to it. We they say people go feed, grow food for them backyard, people go feed, plant fruit trees. So now so we start the do am and as we start and uh, we come to get recognition locally and abroad, we will say they bring their work, they bring small, small money to we reach here today. Now when we talk about planting tree, now this is a project where you feel actually starts. And tell us the importance of planting trees and how successful that project still they go to now. So the project is um, the project, the tree planting project is really going well. Um, because something they happen for this our country where they say not only the government but also all Nigerians must take very serious it is climate change. True. Now if you reach north, the problem with they they say we have what they call the they, they call desert encroachment. Even this farmland don't they turn desert. So that means say our population they reduce. And the way we, we they take the bump it came for Nigeria. Our the population small. they increase. Yeah, sorry, they increase. They increase, yes. But the food production they reduce. Mm -hmm. So that means say hunger still they come. Waiting with the experience and not be hunger. So for us to achieve a very good um, to fight hunger in our country Nigeria, we also need to plant trees. Number one, if we the plant tree, it will help hold our soil together. You know, if it rain now, if rain come. It go wash topsoil, come out. Mm -hmm. But if you get tree planted, it go hold the topsoil. Number two, we they call them carbon sequestration. That is, like human being now, as we they breathe, come out. We they breathe um, CO2. Mm -hmm. That CO2, nine tree need as food. And three, they produce oxygen. That oxygen, nine, we they breathe in as human being. So if we they cut down all our trees, we go notice say it go be difficult for human beings to be breathing and stuff like that. So it's going to affect us. It's going to cause um disease, health disease and what have you. So tree planting is very, very important and we need to know this as um as a country. Um I was opportune to work under the office of the vice president and the federal uh, minister of agriculture and rural development in Abuja, where they say we work for northern part of Nigeria where we're last year. For Zamfara State, you will notice say, almost all the trees they don't cut and down. And because they want to use them for other means. For firewood mm -hmm. and things like that. If you notice, if you can't get to some northern part of Nigeria now, you will see say the firewood where they, they use no big, no fat past my hand. That means say, they don't finish all the trees where they there. So now we need to encourage Nigerians and sensitize them on tree planting and tell them not to do, I mean not to fell trees again. Mm -hmm. It is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So tell us more, like in depth, about this protect ozone. So, uh, protect ozone. Now, what we do, a protect ozone sustainable livelihood initiative. We train children, youths, women, and farmers in sustainable agricultural practices. Sometimes they go and we go plant. You go see people the way they way they go put chemical for the food. We will say they don't want to make um, ants come chop palm. They don't want to make this thing come chop palm. The thing they too much. So after eating anything, we will say they don't put chemical like that. It has what we call withdrawal period. So if the farmers no withdraw that particular time, most farmers wait, wait till they do we say after putting the chemical, then go away the second day, carry and go market. Me and you go 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 buy and chop. chop. Mm -hmm. After eating this kind of food, you know the chemical. The residue of the chemical could be on our system. And this chemical, then they carcinogenic. So now waiting they call carcinogenic diseases, cancer and what have you. That is why you could just see a person go just wake up one day, you no know, go wake up, sleep, nothing drunk. The second day wake, you know, wake up. Now because of these carcinogens, they affect them. You go see people, you say, government don't ban imported frozen food, chicken, fish, they don't ban them. But Nigerian border they so porous, we will see, then they bring them in. This chicken, then they very big. If you go market, now you go one buy. You go buy them, but they don't put formalin. They don't put everything to preserve them. If you chop them, the residue of that chemical go to human body. So what will they do for protect ozone? They say, our home no be direct production. Our home, they say, maybe we train people to do them correct. So what will they do? They say, we go go train farmers and say, this chemical, no use them. This one, when you use them, now the withdrawal period be this. Because People where they chop them, then they sick, then they do all these things. So now you they cause them, you go with them. Then for chicken production, we they tell them, say, if you want to buy chicken, buy locally produced chicken. So if you buy this locally produced chicken, the one where we they produce for our backyard, you know they put chemical to preserve them. So if you chop them, 
you know, go fear say disease go there or something. So, and um, along the line, because our work, don't they reach some embassy here, like German embassy and these people, and US consulate and what have you, they don't they reach and they see, say, what will they do? They make sense. And then they support us. They will train people as they will take, they do this agriculture. So now, um, in 2016, the US consulate with the Lagos, they support us, train people, 20 youth from Ikorodu on sustainable vegetable and poultry production. Um, again, because we do the project very well, they give us award. They can't give us, they can't multiply the money by two. Talk to me, we train 35 people again, which we they close next month. And very soon, the JAMA consulate is also coming to support the work we they do, just to ensure that our youth for Nigeria, they are able to produce their own food themselves, even sell, and have access, I mean, to combat um, hunger, to alleviate poverty, and also to even look good outside. Now, let me take that hunger part. I, I like the fact that you bring in that hunger um, part. Now, as regards to the recent report from the World Report on Food Crisis, that don't list Nigeria among some other countries, like Afghanistan and the rest of them, as one of the countries where they say people where they hungry well, well, they're there for inside them well, well. And then you will see and say for the report from the northern side of the country that they actually suffer a lot of food crisis as a result of conflict and climate related issues. Now, what will be your take on this and how you feel the federal government can actually intervene to combat this particular report? So, I have to say, you talk, say, um, this hunger crisis is as a result of crisis and also climate, climate related issues. Climate related issues, fine. Because as we don't take them, enter, say, full and naked to the but the issue with the ground, they say, this climate is an issue. Now, people where they not, where they say crisis day for their area, you will discover, say, they know if you go farm again. Because if they go farm, they know they come back. Most time, they know they come back. And when even if they go farm, because we don't get good road where they link farms, when they go, before they bring the produce, come city, almost have done square come out. So there's no way hunger no go day country. And it is just so sad that for Africa we will be, we get 65% of the entire world arable land. So for Africa, we suppose no get problem with hunger at all. But I think the government needs to be very intentional on agriculture. Then when we talk about hunger and government, the government, they get role to play. The Minister for Agriculture and Rural Development in the try, but we still feel do more as a country. Now, um, telling people to go into agriculture, no be the matter. But which kind of agriculture? Now, today they go talk, say, go inside agriculture, money day, cassava. Everybody go live everything they go do, they go go do cassava. The next day they go, they go do cassava. The one way they do last year, still day in this thing. So market go crash. Hey, money day inside fish, everybody go rush, go fish. May then let people know, say, not the only primary production. Like may you go cut oil, may you put this, may you put that, be money for agriculture. We get processing. In fact, any youth will go processing now. Go make you go even make money past the farmer. Because the farmer now, let's say cassava. Cassava, you go wait nine months, seven to nine months. You know, but processing, you go just come one day, bam, carry the thing, process two, three days, one week, you don't finish. You know, you they sell. That's processing. Packaging, money they there. So Lagos now, we say we don't get too much land. If you just go one state, you know, do processing and packaging, we can call Lagos. Market day Lagos, where you go. So transportation of agri produce. There are so many places where we say then they do agriculture. As I said earlier, no road reach there. What you feel do you say, for example, tomato? Nigeria is one of the largest producers of tomato. <laughs> but we they import tomato but paste. They tomato. Why? Mm. The reason we say over half of the tomato where we they produce, they spoil due to bad road. Before it's highly perishable. Before it reaches city, it don't spoil. But why can't we just develop local technologies? Now, technologies that are relevant to our prevailing situation. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.